Today we're gonna to continue with activity 1.4, flight planning. We'll be looking at the range, cruise speed, and the fuel capacity for an aircraft. The next step to planning a flight is to find the range, cruise speed, and fuel capacity for your flight. You will use these specifications to calculate your travel time and whether or not you have enough fuel to make that trip. For the example below, we're gonna be taking a flight from Phoenix to El Paso. You will use a Cessna 182 Skylight. The specifications for this aircraft is that the range is set to 820 nautical miles. This means that your Skyline could travel 820 nautical miles before needing to refuel. The cruising speed is 140 knots and the fuel capacity for this aircraft is 88 gallons. Now, in order to determine whether or not you have enough fuel for your Cessna on your trip from Phoenix to El Paso, we're gonna need to know the distance between the two cities, as well as how to calculate the time and hours. So let's go ahead and take a look at a couple examples on how we can calculate this time. It's important to note that the distance from Phoenix to El Paso is approximately 393 nautical miles. Now we'll also need to know the cruising speed for our Cessna Skylane, which is set to 140 knots. In order to determine the time, we're gonna to need to take our distance and divide it by our speed. So in this case, we know that our distance is going to be set to 393 nautical miles. We know that the speed is set to 140 knots. This gives us our time, which equals 393 nautical miles over 140 knots. And if we divide those two, we should get an answer of 2.807 hours. Now, rounding that to the nearest hundredth, we're gonna get a final answer of 2.81 hours in order to fly from Phoenix to El Paso. Now, the next thing we need to do is calculate whether or not we would have enough fuel for this. And when we look at the distance traveled, which is 393 nautical miles, we know that a Cessna Skylane can travel up to 820 nautical miles. Since our 393 is less than the 820, we would be able to make it to El Paso on one tank of fuel. We would not need to have to refuel along the way. For our next example, we're gonna take a look at traveling from Las Vegas, Nevada to El Paso, Texas. This has an approximate distance of 520 nautical miles. Now, nothing has changed as far as the cruising speed. We are still gonna be cruising at 140 knots with a range of 820 nautical miles. So just as we did before, we're gonna use the time equals distance over speed in order to calculate our time. So let's go ahead and input our data to find out how long it would take us to travel from Vegas to El Paso. The first thing we need to do is replace the distance with the distance that needs to be traveled. This is gonna be set to 520 nautical miles. Now we know that time equals 520 nautical miles over whatever speed we're gonna be traveling. In this case, our cruising speed is still set to 140 knots. Now that our cruising speed is set to 140 knots, we're able to go ahead and calculate that our time equals 520 nautical miles divided by 140 knots. We now know that it will take us 3.714 hours in order to travel from Las Vegas to El Paso, Texas. Now we can go ahead and round those numbers up to get a final answer of 3.70 hours. Now let's take a look on whether or not we would have enough fuel in order to make our trip. So again, the distance traveled from Las Vegas to El Paso, Texas is 520 nautical miles. The range of the Cessna is set to 820 nautical miles. So again, we have enough fuel in order to make our trip. So we would not need to refuel along the way. For our last example, we're gonna look and see how long it would take us to fly from Kansas City, Missouri, all the way to El Paso, Texas. Now the approximate range for this trip is 820 nautical miles. The cruising speed for our Cessna is gonna remain at 140 knots as well as the range at 820 nautical miles. We will still be using our equation of time equals distance over speed in order to find how long it would take. So just as before, we're gonna go ahead and take our distance of 820 nautical miles and place that into our equation. 
At this time, we now know that the time would equal 820 nautical miles over the speed at which we are traveling. For our Cessna Skyling, we will be traveling at a speed of 140 knots. So now we know that our time equals 820 nautical miles over 140 knots. Now, if we take that 820 and divide that by our 140, we should get an answer of 5.857 hours. If we go ahead and round those numbers up, we would get a final answer of 5.86 hours. Now, as far as needing to refuel for this trip, it's important to note that our distance traveled from El Paso to Kansas City is 820 nautical miles. The range of a Cessna Skyline is also 820 nautical miles. So most likely a pilot would need to refuel along the way. If not, they would pretty much be landing on fumes for that aircraft, something they probably wouldn't want to do. So for this example, our pilot would need to refuel along the way.